Hello class, Professor Vanderbilt back. I had a little extra time, so I decided I'm gonna give you a short lecture here on something uh, from the previous readings in module. Uh, that's the Salem Witch Trials. They're covered in your textbook on pages 1, 10, 11. And uh, I just wanna elaborate more on them than what's contained in that short passage in your book. Many of you probably know a little bit about it, about this because maybe you had to read the crucible in uh high school or you've seen the play or whatever that's uh based on these events or maybe you've seen the film or whatnot but this all happens in the massachusetts bay colony in 1791-92 now Ma remember the massachusetts bay colony are the puritans now what on the surface, what's going to precipitate these events is a group of teenage girls start acting very strangely. They start ha all having nightmares. Then they'll fall to the ground and have convulsions and scream out and so forth. And evidently, they're seeing things also. Their parents become very concerned, so they take them as typical with the Puritans, to seek counsel from the clergyman. After the clergy talk to these young ladies, the young ladies confess the reason why they're acting so strangely is they've been possessed by witches that are living among them. And then obviously the clergy want to know, well, who are these witches? So they start pointing fingers, and naming names. And in the process, they'll name approximately 150 people in the Massachusetts Bay Colony that are supposedly witches. Uh, the government, led by the clergy, will round up what they believe to be the 20 most dangerous of these witches, and they'll end up putting them on what they call, anyway, trial. It's not a trial like we think of today, but it's a trial uh, based in the Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1792. Now, basically how the trial works is they're all guilty. And they bring the 20 accused into the courtroom, ask the girls to point out the witches. They all point their fingers at these 20 people. And then the 20 people, which are 14 women and six men, have the choice of either confessing that yes, indeed, they are witches. And if they confess, then they'll get the easy punishment. They will be hanged to death. If they refuse to confess, then they'll get a confession out of them, or so they think. They will then be, ultimately, as one person uh, is treated this way, will be pressed right to death. Now, I don't know if you know what pressing a person is, and what it was supposed to do was press a confession out of you. Well, they lay you down, put boards on top of you, and then they start piling on very heavy stones. And they'll pile some on you, let you think about how that feels for a while, and then they'll say, you wanna confess? If you say no, then they'll put more stones on you or more weight, let you think about it, ask you again, and continue to do this. Ultimately, what can happen is if you refuse to confess, they'll put so much weight on you that you will actually suffocate because there's so much pressure on your lungs, you can't even breathe. Uh, from what I've read, this is one of the most excruciating ways to die. It's just extremely painful. So, 19 out of the 20 confessed, 
they'll be hanged. One gentleman refused. He will end up being pressed to death. And, uh, you know, supposedly his last words when they asked him, are you going to confess? He said, and he could barely speak, more weight. And they put more stones on him, and ultimately he suffocated to death. So all 20 of these accused witches were what I would consider, and most people today consider, they were murdered. So you still got about 130 people in jail awaiting trial. Luckily, cooler heads started to prevail in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. And some people started questioning, you know, what are we doing here? Why are we killing these people? If they are witches, shouldn't we try to help them to not be witches and to be good Puritans once again? Because they're all part of us. Shouldn't the clergy try to counsel them into not believing in witchcraft or whatever they believe in, the devil? And luckily, people sort of woke up and said, yeah, that is probably what we should do. Now, Puritans don't have a, an official uh, ceremony like uh, the Catholic Church would perform an exorcism or whatever, but they did, uh, you know, counsel and so forth, and uh, ultimately they'll end up releasing these 150 that were held. Now, uh, this is a horrible event. Uh, you know, the Puritans basically freaked out, killed 20 of their own and before it was too late, and they decided to take a much more peaceful means of ridding themselves, supposedly, of witch, witches among them. Now, <clears throat> just a couple things on witchcraft, and then I'm going to tell you about some theories as to why this, you know, this unexplainable event happened. Women have been accused of being witches for a long time, and the overwhelming majority of these Puritans accused are women. It was a way to degrade women, Women who tried to gain any sort of power and influence would immediately be accused of being a witch back in Europe, you know, in the you know, 1100s, 1200s or whatever. And commonly what they did to witches back then was they would burn them alive at the stake. Uh, so luckily, no witches were burned to death in the colonies at all. Times had evolved since then, but this still doesn't help the fact that 19 of them were hanged and one of them pressed to death. So, <clears throat> as far as why this crazy event would happen, there are several theories. One theory is, I suppose we could call it, the teenagers will be teenagers theory. All the young girls who you know, accused these people of being witches were teenage girls. Teenagers act crazy. They might have dreams. They might think they're seeing things. Uh, all of you are either still teenagers or you've been teenagers not too long ago. I look back at the things I did when I was a teenager and I'm convinced teenagers are partially wacko. It's because you got so many hormones rushing through your body. It's just normal. Teenagers will be teenagers. I had teenage girls. They acted the same way in many cases as my wife and I did when we were teenagers. And now I have a much greater appreciation for my parents because I know what they went through when they're dealing with me as a teenager. You'll all find out sooner or later in your lives. So, <clears throat> teenagers will be teenagers theory is a logical explanation, I suppose. Another explanation is uh, the dirty politics gone horribly wrong theory. There was a lot of political turmoil and struggle in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. And remember, they had set up government systems with town governments and a colonial-wide legislature and so forth. There's political competition, 
And it just so happens that the girls pointed their fingers at people who were in rival political groups other than their parents. And there's a theory they did this for political reasons because if somebody in your family was accused of being a witch, you could ultimately lose your land and certainly it'd be very detrimental to your political career. <clears throat> so the dirty politics gone horribly wrong theory, I suppose holds some weight. Another one would be the, I'd like to call it, the babysitter voodoo theory. One of the accused witches that was executed was a Caribbean slave. Her name was Tichaba. She had to babysit many of these young girls and she was originally from the Caribbean. So there's chances are that when she lived in the Caribbean and some Caribbean islands, the voodoo religion is quite prevalent. So when you're babysitting a bunch of young ladies, they're gonna talk to them and they might you know, wanna know, what was it like where you grew up? What were things like when you were a little girl? And she might've told them about uh, the Caribbean, tell them about the voodoo religion and so forth. So that would sort of put an idea in the heads of these young teenage girls and then they were very quick to point a finger at her and unfortunately she was executed. Another theory, I suppose we could call it the psychological trauma theory. Now, the Puritans, when they came to the colonies in 1630, always thought it was gonna be a temporary arrangement. Because remember, they thought they were the pure form of the Church of England. And they thought sooner or later back in England, people would wake up, figure out they were right all along, and that they would ask the Puritans all to return to England to lead the Church of England because they were the pure, firm believers. Well, in 1691, an official message came to the Massachusetts Bay Colony from the British government and parliament. And a lot of them anticipating opening it thought this is it. They've finally figured out that we're the right ones. They're inviting us back. When they opened the official message, they were very, very disappointed and shocked. What it said was, we're going to combine the Massachusetts Bay Colony and Plymouth Colony, the Puritans, and create the greater royal colony of Massachusetts. So no longer will you be a separate autonomous colony and we're revoking your joint stock charter because it was meaningless anyway. So basically, as the Puritans looked at this, they weren't being called back to England. They're being lumped together with those crazy pilgrims. People in England didn't see any difference. And they're doomed. They're never going to be invited back. They're here forever, which was quite traumatic for them. Shattered a lot of their dreams and beliefs. Now, the final theory that I want to uh, uh put forth to you that really makes a lot of scientific sense has to do with, first of all, the climate in 1791. <clears throat> it happened to be a very rainy fall and they kept having to delay and delay harvesting their main grain crop, which was rye. When they finally did harvest it, they had to harvest it wet. And when they stored the, the rye grain away, some of it became moldy. But they didn't have enough surplus stores to not consume it. And consuming it, as far as they knew, wasn't going to kill you or anything. So they had to eat a lot of moldy rye grain. Now... Today we know, scientifically, 
that rye that becomes moldy produces a chemical known as ergot, E-R-G-O-T. And if you consume too much of it, you get a condition which is known as ergot poisoning. Now, ergot, the chemical produced by this, by the mold on rye, later on in the 1950s was refined into something that the CIA was trying to create, a truth serum, and they refined it into the chemical LSD that they were experimenting, giving to spy prisoners, thinking it would make them tell the truth, a truth serum. So, ergot is the base ingredient for LSD. Ergot poisoning, some of the uh, effects of it is that you can fall to the ground and have convulsions like those teenage girls were. It can cause you to hallucinate, to have horrific nightmares, all the symptoms those girls were having. So I suppose we could call this the Puritans were all sort of loopy theory because they're all consuming various amounts of ergot and perhaps it had a much more uh, bigger impact on you know the small bodies of young teenagers uh, and ultimately it seems also as maybe they made their way through that moldy rye grain and we get to the spring and summer when they can consume other items they all sort of snap to it and decide, what are we doing murdering these people? We should counsel them. So they kind of came out of the effects of the ergot poisoning. That all makes quite a bit of sense, and if you combine it with some of those other factors, all combined, it created this horrible event where the Puritans murdered 20 people. So that's my little talk on the Salem Witch Trials. I wanted to offer more clarification because your authors kind of brushed through it. And I'm sure you learned a bit about it in high school. So that's it for today. Take care. Stay cool. Be safe. Bye now.